What's up? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, let's talk about tipping pitches, common ways that pitchers tip their pitches that can give hitters an advantage and make their day really tough. All right, so if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan. I'm a former pro pitcher. I've tipped pitches in my past, and I've seen lots of young pitchers tipping their pitches. So this is something we definitely want to cover here today. I'm going to give you six really good tips of what to look for as a coach, parent, or player. All right, the first and probably most common way that pitchers will tip their pitches is their hand height. So you might have your hand here for a fastball, and then it might be here for a curveball. And this is something that subconsciously you don't even realize you're doing. Obviously, with all these uh, you know, tips that you're not really going to realize you're doing it, but it could be here for fastball, here for curveball. And this could be because of the way it feels in your hand, that you feel like you need a little more room, that you got to free things up. But the height of the glove is one of the easiest ways to spot a pitcher who's tipping his pitches. All right, the second most common way of tipping your pitches is wrist angle. So this kind of goes hand in hand. So again, you could have your hands high for a fastball, a little bit lower for a curveball. That's a common one. But beyond that, the angle of your wrist will often change. So sometimes maybe you're here for your fastball, and then when you get your change up, because you have to dig a little bit, you change your wrist and you're like this. So it's very common to see something like this for change up, this for fastball, or this for fastball, this for change up. You'll see a subtle difference in the wrist angle or the arm angle entirely. So look for these differences if you're trying to spot these as a team or if you're a coach trying to help your pitchers get better and reduce the amount of pitch tipping that they do. Look for the wrist angle, look for the elbow angle, stuff like that, where it flows out of the glove. There's often a difference in a lot of especially younger pitchers. All right, the number three way that pitchers tend to tip their pitches is wiggles and taps to the glove. So sometimes as you get older, you'll start to do this intentionally to throw hitters off, but it is harder, especially if you've, so I'll link to it below, but my video on getting your uh, hook'em horns changeup grip this one can be tough to get right, to have it fit perfectly where you're like, okay, I love how the ball feels in my hand, and it can take more time to get that in your glove. So you might see fastball has like very little movement and then change up, there's a little more rooting around in it. And this one seems obvious, but it's not. And if you're not looking for this, pitchers can do this in plain sight, and no one, if you're just not tuned into the pitcher, they could easily be tipping pretty much everything that they throw. So as a coach, you wanna have someone on your team monitor this for your own guys and if you want some help from the other team watch what their glove does you'll see movement different movements wiggles uh, taps just like some kind of difference in the way their hand is moving and approaching their glove to try to get the different pitches that they're throwing all right the fourth way that pitchers will tip their pitches is with their back leg so this could between be between a fastball and a curveball or a fastball and a change up whatever fastball and any other uh, breaking or off speed pitch is they'll typically maybe like sit back on their back leg longer or they'll sink longer. And this is something that I actually did one season. So my coach noticed that on my fastball, I was like pretty fast and stable with my back leg. And on my curveball, there was a little bit of a dip to it. So I sunk into my back leg a little more and I stayed on it a little bit longer so that my tempo definitely looked different to him. And he thought that's why I was actually releasing a lot of my curveballs a little bit high and I wasn't getting through them quite as well. So he said, hey, they could, they could actually pick up on that. He's like, there's definitely a visual difference between what happens on your fastball versus your curveball. There's a little very subtle one that you stay back longer. He said, but you gotta keep moving through it because they're gonna pick up on that and it seems like it's hurting you mechanically as well. So again, we're looking for differences. It's not just about always tipping your pitches. It's also about finding inconsistencies in your delivery, which can be problematic like this one was for me. And piggybacking off of that, tempo in general can be a tip. So if pitchers are really fast when they throw their fastball or they're a little bit more deliberate and slow when they throw their curveball, you can definitely see this sometimes. It could be the way they go through their windup or through their stretch. It could just be the tempo of their leg kick. Tempo changes in general. It doesn't have to be the sinking that I was talking about. Tempo changes in general can be a big way that pitchers tip pitches from fastball to one of their off-speed pitches. All right, the next way that pitchers often tip their pitches is fanning their glove. So you'll see this, that sometimes when they're rooting around, maybe they always have some movement, but sometimes the fingers don't change and other times the fingers fan. So they'll move their hand out a little bit to give themselves a little more room inside their glove or whatever they're doing. But when you see pitchers fan their glove, 
sometimes that's a sign that a breaking ball is coming or a specific pitch is coming versus their fastball. So look for differences, not just in wiggles and general movement, but also fanning of the glove. Pitchers tend to do this and not think about it too much. The next method of tipping pitches is how it comes out of their glove. So we talked about wrist angle and arm angle, how it, it can be different sometimes depending on how you set up. But the other thing is the output. So once they start to go through their delivery, sometimes the way they separate it will be a little bit different. Maybe they take it a little bit out of their glove laterally. Maybe it's here and it's down for the fastball, but it's kind of like back with the curveball or out with the changeup. There's a million ways to do it. There's not a, you don't want to do that. It should always leave and start the same exact way when you separate, but often there's a difference. Maybe it's just the way their wrist is, the way they angle their hand, so you can see a difference in the ball. So they, you know, fastball's here, curveball's here, and you see a little bit different, a little more whiteness maybe, like that versus that. So there could be a difference from there, or it could be an angle thing, like the way it comes out, because pitchers a lot of times, when they're trying to get on top of their curveball, they're subconsciously trying to get it to the top quicker. So the path out of their gloves could be here versus their typical arm swing. So just keep in mind, especially from the dugout, you're gonna be able to see this stuff a little better, the angle that it comes out from the dugout, but that can be another common way that pitchers will tip their pitches. And if there's something that you are really concerned about either fixing for your own staff or picking up on the other team's staff, then I think from the dugout, depending on which side, if it's a righty or lefty, this can be something that you can spot. Now, the last thing to think about as far as tipping pitches is just their overall demeanor, their body movements, some of their mannerisms. Sometimes when a pitcher's ready to throw a fastball, there's maybe like more shoulder movement. There's just a different look in his eyes. He looks aggressive. And sometimes when they're ready to throw a curveball or something that they're maybe a little more apprehensive about or it requires a little more thought, then there's sort of a little bit more lost there and they're just a little bit more deliberate than like the, okay, I'm coming at you, bro, kind of fastball. So just general demeanor stuff can be important and it can also be a misnomer, so you never know because pitchers that are aware of this stuff, like I said, I used to sometimes screw around a little bit longer than other times. Um, that one can be, again, it can be where pitchers play it against you or not. But again, overall demeanor stuff, those clues, and this is more just from like a hitter watching the pitcher, um, you might be able to pick up like, it looks like this dude's about to throw me a fastball. Now, is that reliable information as a hitter? I don't know, but it's something to think about. And one more bonus way that pitchers tip pitches is how fast they get the grip. So if they come set and it's like here, boom, and they're ready to go, might be a fastball. Or if it's they come set, it takes some time, then they go. So look at the time it takes from when they nod and they accept it to when they go versus other pitches. So again, a fastball grip is gonna be much easier to get and most pitchers start with their fastball grip. Um, and so if they have to switch, it might take a little bit more time and they might not think about this. They might be like, as soon as I get my grip and I've nodded, I'm ready to pitch. So then if there's a difference where it's like, it takes me one second to get my change up, now I've got it, now I'm gonna go. So you can kind of tell like he always gets it. As soon as he has the grip, he goes. So therefore, if it takes longer to get the grip and then he goes, it seems like he was rooting for something. So it's probably off speed. So look at the time difference between fastball and I go versus change up and now I go. So there could be a, a consistency, a consistent gap in speed between how fast they get it and when they start their delivery. Now, as far as like coaching here, the one big thing that I will say that can help reduce a lot of the pitch tipping is to get your toughest grip before you enter your glove. So what this could be is if the chain up is your hardest grip to get, you can come set, get your sign, have your grip set. So now when you come into your glove, you have the tough grip and I can switch to the fastball in lightning quick. So again, like if I have this chain up grip is tough, I come set, I've already got it. It's really easy to switch to fastball. Whereas if I have fastball grip, it's kind of hard to switch the change up grip. This is why when guys throw a splitter, they'll typically get their split grip early when they're getting their sign. That way they have it where they want it and they can switch in a second. And so that can be a common way to do it. So if you have a trouble getting the grip and it takes some time, then I would advise you or your pitchers to get the tough grip first. So while you're hanging here, before you step on the rubber, get your tough grip and then come set. Now, yeah, a guy could, he could run, he could run and you might have to like throw the ball you know, they get, hey, step off, step off, he's going. But that's pretty rare and infrequent at higher levels of baseball where before the play, you're going to have to do anything with it. And if you did, if you're like, hey, step off, he's going, 
you know, like you'll get the grip, like you'll figure it out. Like it's not that big of a deal. So I wouldn't say don't do this on the off chance that someone starts taking off before the pitch, which is unlikely and, and kind of stupid to be honest. Um, really, if you have this grip before you get on the rubber, then there's pretty low downside risk, if any, and it's a pretty high upside to like, again, I've got my tough grip. Now I can switch the fastball anytime I want or curveball or slide or whatever. Curveball and slider grips aren't too hard to get, but change up grips are tough and splitter grips are tough if you throw that. So hopefully today's video helped. Tipping pitches can be a real problem, especially high levels where people are, there's extras in the dugout and they're just like trained on you. Maybe you have a, a front office guy, an ops guy in college baseball or a manager in, in high school baseball who's just gonna watch and look for pitch tips. That can be tough. So. As a coach, you wanna help your players with this. As a player, you wanna be as consistent as possible. And if you want a hitting advantage, this is something to look for, all right? Thanks again, I'm Coach Sam Blewett. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you here in the next video.